Hello and welcome to another yoga breakdown series. I am so excited to bring this to you today. Um, what we're going to be doing is a little bit of down dog today and we're doing this in my small little nook of my bedroom that I use for my practice. So um, down dog or a downward facing dog is something that you're going to be doing in many of your vinyasa classes. Um, so you are um, definitely going to be well versed in this um, if you're taking a vinyasa class. It is something that is, again, it's one of those deceptively simple poses where um, it sounds easy in theory and the cueing will sound easy and then when you get into it, you may even be told it's a resting pose and then you're in, in it for a while and you're like, I don't feel like I'm resting. So this, I'm hoping the tips and tricks that I give you today will allow you to have some rest in this pose and, um, will allow you to see this as a resting pose through your vinyasa and through your yoga class. So let's get to it. So in your down dog, you really want to make sure that you have a strong foundation with your tabletop to start. And then from your tabletop, you'll be lifting into your down dog. So I have a little tr trick that I use when I go into my down dog and um, I hope that this will help you a little bit uh, when you go from your tabletop to your down dog. So what I do when I go into it is I will inch my hands one half hand distance up. So I'll be like this and I will inch those hands up. So I will use like this motion up just like this, that will bring you halfway up your hand and then put your hand down. This will put you in really good alignment so when you push it back into your down dog, you're in really good alignment. So let me show you how this works. In your tabletop, one half distance, lean forward just a little bit, bring yourself up into your down dog. Come back down into your tabletop. Again, one half distance up, lifting up, tucking the toes, lifting up, even just a little bit to get that alignment and then lifting all the way up into your down dock. Perfect. So from here, you may hear something that says, I'm gonna drop my dog for a minute. You may hear something that says, pedal your feet out, walk your dog, something like that. So let me show you what pedaling your feet out, walking your dog is. I'm gonna turn around so you can see my feet better. So that will be bending one knee in, then bending the alternate knee. Bending the eighth knee, and bending the alternate knee. You can bend it just a little bit, even do just little pulses, or you can bend it in pretty deeply and bring it in. So once you're in your down dog and you have walked it out and you feel that you're comfortable, it's now really time to hone in on your alignment. You want to be pressing down into the hands and you want to be pressing down in all those sections of the hand. So I'm going to bring my hand up a little closer to the camera here. You want to be pressing everywhere into the palm, right into this meaty section as well. And you want to avoid cupping. Sometimes instructors will say cup or cupcake your hand. You really want to avoid that. You want those connections to the mat on all of your hands. It will help keep your arm nice and strong, keep you in alignment through the chest, and will allow what we call proper weight bearing. So one thing that's super important in this pose is you want to have really good weight bearing in the hands. 
If you don't, you're compensating somewhere else in your body. You may compensate in your shoulder area, your hips, your back, your elbows, your wrists, anything like that, and that is going to make this pose extremely uncomfortable for you and will be harder for you to maintain. And so when you need to lift your leg to a three-legged or go into any other positions or even stepping forward, it's just not gonna feel good. Pushing down and move. Get the strength in your, in your arms. You feel that strength in your shoulders. And you're looking down in between your knees. You're not rounding down like this. You are keeping that back nice and straight, but looking down. And let's talk about the heels for a minute. Not all heels touch down. So you'll see my feet. You'll see my heels and my full dog. So let me do my full expression dog. And you see the space between my heel and the floor. I have tight, tight hamstrings and don't see those touching the floor. If I continuously press to push my heels into the floor, what could happen is I could really do a number on my ankles and my legs. So what I would suggest you do is some instructors will tell you to push back on your heels. I would suggest what you do is push to your degree as best as you can. But if you feel pain or something is extremely uncomfortable for you, back off, you're fine. You don't have to be like your neighbor if your neighbor's heels are touching the ground. A lot of times this is anatomical, which can mean that your leg and torso ratio may make it so that your heels may not ever touch the ground. So what I'm trying to say, long story short, don't worry about it. It's okay. No biggie. Okay. It is possible for you to bend at the knee if you want to. That's okay. It actually might relieve some pressure in your back. Tonight, it's relieving pressure in my back to bend. You can do this. This is fine. This is a down dog. This is okay. This is a down dog. This is okay. This is a down dog. Straight is a down dog. Okay? So that's fine as well. Another option for you in your down dog is to put blocks under your hands. And when you're putting the blocks under your hands, it will just give you a little bit more length in your arms. This is a good judge, by the way, to tell if you have that anatomical condition we talked about. Generally speaking, when I put blocks under my hands, my heels hit the mat. Um, or just about hit the mat. So that just tells me there's an anatomical issue with my ability to for my heels to touch the mat, which I think is kind of cool and kind of interesting. Anyway, that's just me. But anyway, that's a possibility as well, and it can relieve some pressure from your wrists, and it can relieve some pressure um, from the upper body, the shoulders, and stuff like that too. It's one of the th reasons why I like to do it is that it relieves that pressure. So it's like just great all the way around. It's really cool. So let's look at my fold down dog one more time and I will show you a couple of variations. I will show you a three-legged dog um, so that you know what that looks like. Going into my down dog and your instructor says lift your leg high, three-legged dog. We're lifting our leg, so I'm going to show you my other leg so you can really see it. We're lifting the leg, hips width distance. This is it. This is my hips width distance, okay? This is what you don't want to do. That's not hips width distance. It's nice and high. Even this throws me out. It's nice and high, but you're not in your range of motion. 
Raise your leg, hips width distance. Take your time to do it. Feel it. Feel a catch. Stay there. Lower it down to the ground. Press back. Lift the other leg. Slowly and with control. Feel a catch. All the way down. And then from here, when you do that, you can let it catch. And then, then you can start to roll into your other positions. And let me just go into a lunge here for you to see. Okay? Then you can raise up into something else. Okay? Then you can step back into your dog. If you're up like this, it's more of a sunbird. And then it's going to be like, you have to torque yourself to bring yourself around. It's not comfortable. And it's really not the way it should be. So, a gentle lift. Take your time. Breathe slowly into that lift until you feel a bit of a catch. If you're like me and you have some mobility in the hip, you may not feel the catch, like I don't feel the catch. So I just have to remind myself that I think this is the way it should be. This is about good before my hip will start to kick out a little bit. So anyway, we're gonna take a moment again to look at my down dog. I want you to try your down dog, try a variation of the three-legged dog, tell me what you think, and um, make some comments. I'd love to hear you and thank you so much for visiting today. So let's take a look at it one more time. Okay, thank you so, so, so much for visiting me today on the mat to watch me make a fool of myself. No, just kidding. To, <laughs> and to um, play around with Down Dog with me. Again, comment if you'd like. Thumbs up if you like things like this. Um, hit the notification bell if you want to see more of my yoga breakdowns. The next one will be in a couple weeks, so early no March I can't the date isn't on the top of my head I'll, I'll write it down below but anyway enjoy this practice with it we'll see you next time for another amazing amazing thing and I think actually next time what I'm going to do is child's pose so um come back if you'd like to see variations on child child's pose and see what you can do to improve your child's pose bye thank you so much namaste